Today I'm going to teach you how to examine thyroid gland. How to examine thyroid gland. Your exam will ask. Please examine this happy patient thyroid gland. He is happy now. Why? You are going to examine this patient thyroid gland. Not like other examination. When you perform a thyroid examination, you have to go from front as well as from back of your patient. So before starting examination, make sure there is enough space behind your patient. Otherwise, you are in trouble in the middle part of the examination. After that, like all other examination, number one is take consent. I'm Dr. Dinoshan. I'm going to examine your neck. Would you like to take consent from back or front? It is from front. From front, take consent. Number one. Number two, carefully inspect for the lung. Not only that, offer a glass of water to your patient. Can you drink this one? What are you going to looking for? You are going to looking for the moving lump in the neck with swelling. There are two kinds of moving lump. One is thyroid cyst. It is in the midline. Other one is thyroid gland. It can be either this side, this side. We are rarely in the midline. So those two lump move with swelling or deprivation. So you have to differentiate midline thyroid or thyroid cyst. In order to differentiate, ask your patient to put tongue out. Your thyroid cyst is attached to base of the tongue. Once you put tongue out with fixed jaw like this, you have to fix this one. If you are not moving with your putting tongue out, it is thyroid cyst. It is a thyroid cyst. If it is does not move, it is in thyroid origin. If it is more thyroid cyst, if it is does not thyroid gland origin lump. So third, fourth one, carefully look for the scars and dilated veins. There can be previous lobectomy scars, and dilated vein indicate some degree of venous obstruction because of lump. If your lump is enlarge enough, large enough, ask your patient to raise the hand. Once you raise hand. Your thoracic inlet size is reduced. Not only that, thyroid gland is little bit come into the thoracic inlet as well. So there will be venous encroachment. There will be venous obstruction. Because of that, your patient develop facial plethora. Sometimes blue lips as well cyanosis. If your patient develop those symptoms, facial plethora with cyanosis and encroach neck waves. Once your patient elevate hand for one minute, that is called positive Pemberton sign. To perform for positive Pemberton signs, not positive, to perform Pemberton signs, there should be enough enlarged thyroid gland. Don't do this one for very small nodules. You are in trouble. After that, those are the things you are going to do in the front. Take consent, inspect, ask your patient to turn out. Yeah, we look for the scars and dilated vein. Perform Pemberton signs. After that, you have to move into the back of your patient. After you are moving into the back of your patient, keep hand like this. And using other hand, carefully palpate for the consistency of the lump. Whether it is hard, whether it is soft in consistency, carefully palpate. Again, carefully palpate for the nodularity as well. How many nodules are there? Whether it is multi nodule or single nodule. Please move one hand at a time. Fix with this hand, move with this hand. Don't do in both hands simultaneously. Why? Then it is look like a massage actually. Not only massage, really you can stimulate cavity sinus both sides. Your patient can develop dangerous bradycardia followed by cardiac arrest. It is a dangerous condition. Don't do that. Fix with one hand. Carefully palpate with other hand. After that, look for cervical lymph node as well from behind cervical lymph node. After completion of behind examination, again you have to come from front and look for the tracheal deviation. This one again from front. This is from behind. Behind palpate for consistency and nodularity and cervical lymph node. 
Again from front, upper again from front. Look for the trachea deviation. From top to bottom, you have to palpate the trachea. Whether it is deviating to the right side or left side, you have to palpate. After that, keep your these two fingers in the clavicle head and look for the midline whether trachea is there or not. Then you can easily identify deviated trachea. After that, carefully look for retrosternal extension. If it is large enough, try to help in the lower border of your thyroid, patient's thyroid gland. Ask your patient to follow and try to palpate the lower border. Sometimes you will not be able to palpate the lower border. In that case, focus over the clavicle and sternum to identify if there is any dullness. If there is a dullness, it indicates retrosternal extension. Try to palpate first. You can't palpate, then focus. Yes, it is dull. It indicates retrosternal extension. After that, carefully look for the displaced carotid pass. Displaced carotid pass. Because of the enlarged thyroid, your carotid pulse is not in usual position sometimes. Carefully palpate for displaced carotid pass. Don't look at here. Only just displaced carotid pass. Then carefully look for carotid probing. Not carotid probing, thyroid probing. Where I try to check for thyroid probing, it is in the right upper lobe. My question is, why right upper lobe? Not left lobe, not lower lobe. Why right upper lobe? Please comment below. After completion of thyroid examination, you have to do some extra examination, some general examination in order to identify the thyroid disorders. Number one, eye examination. You must do this examination. Thyroid eye examination. You should carefully look for lead 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 retraction and ophthalmoplasia. Lead 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 retraction and ophthalmoplasia in your patient's eye. Sometimes proptosis also. Then carefully look your patient's hand. Palpate whether he or she has sweaty hand and check for the pulse. Ding 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 ding. Tachycardia is there or not? Then fine tremor. If your patient has fine tremor, what you can see is like this movement, you can see fine tremor. Those are the things you have to do when you are programming thyroid examination. After completion of your thyroid examination, your examiner will ask, okay, tell me your finding. Would you, are you ready to present your finding? Are you ready to present your thyroid examination? I am ready with my thyroid examination. This is my patient. So, this patient is having a lump in the anterior inferior aspect of the neck, which is moved up with deglutition. There is no visible scar in the neck or dilated veins, and pembertin sign is negative. Lump is firm in consistency, and surface is nodular with a prominent nodule in the right upper lobe. There is no cervical lymphadenopathy. It is lower border can be felt. Trachea is deviated to the left side and carotid pulse is deviated to posterior artery. There is no bone. She is clinically euthyroid and there are no thyroid eye signs. So don't stop from there. Keep continuously speaking. So my probable diagnosis is a clinically euthyroid, long-standing multinodular bladder, without retrosternal extension. I would like to investigate her with a thyroid profile and ultrasound scan of the neck and pyramidal aspiration of the prominent nodule to decide on further management. That is how you are going to present. But again, your examiner will be ready with another set of questions. Are you ready to answer those questions? Yes. At the end of your successful examination and presentation, your examiner will be ready with another set of questions. Are you ready to answer those questions? We will see. Question number one. What are the causes for diffuse thyroid enlargement? What are the causes for diffusely enlarged thyroid? It can be due to simple colloid. Thyroiditis or Graves disease. In those conditions, thyroid gland uniformly diffusely enlarged. 
Question number two. What are the process for? What are the differential diagnosis for a solitary nodule of thyroid? Only single nodule you can palpate. Only one nodule you can palpate. It can be due to prominent nodule of marginodulocyte. Patient has marginodulocyte, but other nodules are very small, difficult to palpate. Only one nodule prominent you can palpate it. Hemorrhage into colloid cyst. Your thyroid contains colloid. The bleeding into that colloid. In that case, you can see it as a solitary nodule of thyroid. In patient with thyroid adenoma and thyroid carcinoma, in patient with thyroid adenoma and carcinoma, you can see a solitary nodule in thyroid gland. Question number three: What is the significance of a thyroid point? Where are you going to find thyroid point? Right, upper lobe of thyroid gland. It indicates high vascularity and hyperdynamic circulation. You also be seen in patient with Graves disease. What are the compressive features? What are the compressive features? Trachea deviated, carotid pulse deviated. Not only that, patient complaining dyspnea, especially with nocturnal dyspnea and dyspnea recent onset. Those are the compressive features: dyspnea, dyspnea, tracheal deviation, and carotid pulse deviation. What are the features of retrosternal extension? Retrosternal extension, dullness, retrosternal dullness. You cannot get below the lump. You cannot get below the lump. Positive pemberton signs. Once you patient elevate the hand, your patient develop engorged neck veins, plexial plethora, and some cyanosis in the lip and engorged neck veins. Those are the features of Retrosternal extension. What are those? Percussion to dilated percussion. You cannot get below the lump. Positive pemberton signs and dilated neck veins. Those are the features of retrosternal extension. What are the thyroid eye signs? What are thyroid eye signs? Lid lag, lid retraction, exostenosis, proptosis. Optanoplasia, those are the thyroid eye signs. Lid retraction, lid lag, proptosis, ectopthalmus, and optanoplasia. Those are the thyroid eye signs. Next question: What are the malignant features? If your patient says recent rapid enlargement of lung, it is one of the signs of malignancy. Voice change, cervical lymph node. Hard in consistency, multiple attachment with irregular margins. Those are the features of thyroid malignancy. If your patient says rapid enlargement, voice change, hard lump with cervical lymph node, irregular margins with multiple attachment. Be cautious. Next question: How do you identify thyroid cyst? How do you identify thyroid cyst? Ask your patient to put thumb out. While you are fixing the jaw, you have fixed the jaw and ask your patient to put tongue out. With trunk protrusion, if your lump, anterior lymph lump, move up, that is a thyroid cyst. That's a thyroid cyst. Why do we need to operate thyroid cyst? Why do you we need to operate thyroid cyst? It is cosmetically unacceptable. It is. Cosmetically unacceptable. Number one, number two can get infect, can get infective one. Number three, there is a risk of malignant transformation. There is a risk of malignant transformation. So number one, cosmetically unacceptable. Number two, there is a risk of getting infection, and number three, malignant transformation risk. Because of those risks, we are going to operate thyroid cyst. What is operation? Operation is called cyst tongue operation. Remove entire sac with part of hyoid bone as well. Next one. What are the indication for thyroidectomy? Last one. What are the indication for thyroidectomy? Cosmetically unacceptable. You have to do surgery if patient bleeding. If your patient has compressive symptoms, you have to do the surgery. If your patient shows features of malignancy, these features. You have to do 
certainly. If your patient shows features of pyrotoxicosis, sometimes unable to control with the drug, you may have to go for the surgery. That is all regarding how to examine and questions regarding the thyroid gland. Thank you very much.